AP Biology, Digestive Systems, Part 2. Um, so we just spoke about the liver um, and the bile that it produces and how that works uh, with the lipase to break down fats, and it's stored in the gallbladder. Um, so within the small intestine, how are things absorbed? They're absorbed through, we've already spoken of these, the villi and microvilli, those little finger-like projections. So they're a bit small here, but you can kind of see how they're little squiggles at the edge of these. So these are villi, and then with on top of one villi, there are microvilli. So this is one of these, and then they've got little microvilli villi, which make that for that brush border, which increases the surface area um, so that it does a better job of absorbing. Um, and in a villi, there's a capillary, so that's co collect connected to our circulatory system and it absorbs food and takes it into the bloodstream. So that how, that's how it absorbs those nutrients. There are also lymph vessels and they absorb fatty acids. All right, what are the hormones that are used in the digestive system? Because um, hormones play a huge part in signaling uh, different things to occur. There's one called gastrin. It stimulates stomach uh, the stomach to produce gastric juice. If there was no gastrin, you wouldn't produce gastric juice and it wouldn't break your food down in your stomach. There's also secretin. It stimulates the pancreas to produce all those enzymes we spoke of earlier that it produces. And then the other major one to know is cholecystokinin. Uh, and that stimulates the secretion of pancreatic enzymes and the release of bile. <clears throat> so without that, we wouldn't get those pancreatic enzymes or the release of bile to work together to break down things in the small intestine. All right, so now we've spoken of the mouth, breaks up food, moistens food, digests starch, breaks down those carbohydrates, kills germs. It uses that saliva with amylase in it to break down those carbohydrates. Um, then the stomach kills germs, breaks up food, digests the proteins with that pepsin, and it stores food up to two liters. Then it, um, we go to the small intestines, where we break down all the foods, proteins, starch, fats, nucleic acids, um, and also absorbs the nutrients. And our two accessory organs are the liver, which produces bile, and that's stored in the gallbladder, this little green doohickey right here. Um, and it also breaks up fats. Um, the bile works with the lipase to break down fats. Then the pancreas produces enzymes to digest proteins and starch. So the pancreas produces a bunch of en enzymes so we can break down more proteins and starches. Okay, after the small intestine, we end up in the large intestine. Um, it's the cecum, colon, and rectum are the portions of the large intestine. The cecum is this first initial part. There's your appendix, which is this tiny little thing right here. And then the cecum, and then the colon, and the rectum. Also, this is the ascending colon, transverse colon, it goes sideways, and descending, it goes down. The major function of the large intestine is to reabsorb water and salts. Um, when we talk about salts, we also mean electrolytes. So you know how your Gatorade bottle says, contains electrolytes. It's that type of thing. All right, the large intestine uses, uh, we use two and a half gallons of water every day just in digestive juices. So that's why it's super important to stay hydrated. Um, your body uses so much water. All right, more than 90% of the water is reabsorbed um, as it processes your food um, from those digestive juices, right? Because you've got the chyme, which is that acidic solution. So the water is reabsorbed from that chyme, um, but let's say not enough water is absorbed, that results in diarrhea, and if too much water is absorbed, that results in constipation. So it's an important function of the large intestine to reabsorb those, that water and those salts. All right, in the large intestine, there's a bunch of harmless but helpful bacteria. So one is E. coli. I'm sure you've heard about that all the time, E. coli. It's something that they research all the time. Um, it's a very interesting organism. Um, the most helpful ones are the bacteria that produce vitamins. So they'll give you more vitamin K, um, folic acid, B vitamins, things like that. 
Um, they also generate gases. So that's a byproduct of bacterial metabolism. So as they're breaking down things and producing vitamins, they're also generating those gases. Uh, things like methane and hydrogen sulfide. Okay, the last section of the colon, um, which is also the large intestines, um, is the rectum. And that's where it, they uh, eliminate feces, right? So anything that you couldn't have digested, extracellular waste, which is typically cellulose from plants, refrigerator fiber uh, from animals, from humans, it might be more odd things that we didn't digest. Um, it also gets rid of extra salt and masses of bacteria. So the bacteria that have been uh, neutralized through the acidic um, process of digestion are now eliminated um, in the rectum. All right, so that is the large intestines mostly absorb water, also absorb those electrolytes back. So now you see the entirety of the human digestive system. All right, the appendix is a vestigial organ. It's a little extra thing. Uh, so the ileum is our last part of our small intestine, then it connects to the large intestine. And then here's the appendix. It sits off right here. So just a little guy sitting right there. Um, okay, so it uh, just is a little extra thing that's connected to your large intestine. Hungry for information? Ask questions. I would be happy to answer them in class. We're going to go over uh, a little bit more in detail and a little more uh, tour of the human body and the digestive system. Ready? Bye.